Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Above my desk hangs a sign that I carried around the Capitol in 2011, and I realized preparing for this debate that it was actually my first state budget speech. The sign reads, Love Wins, and I hang it above my desk as a reminder of what we fight for in this building and why. The Love Wins sign for me is a plumb line. It's the line dropped to make sure that we are building a strong foundation for this state we love, for the people we serve, and for the generations to come. That plumb line also shows us if there's been a shift and if we need to adjust. The biennial state budget is an important time to drop a plumb line. It's an important time to see if we are building a strong and sustainable future for the Wisconsin people. And it's an important time to reflect on what it means to drop that line and evaluate who we are. For me, Love Wins reminds me of the words of Dr. Cornell West, that justice is what love looks like in public. I believe that when we lead valuing fairness and justice, we will make the right choices when it comes how to, to how to spend the state's money. We will know what is true, what is just, what is fair, and what is right. The plumb line will drop in front of us, and we will know what to do. I've evaluated this budget on that plumb line. I've looked as someone who values fairness and justice, and the results have led me back to my very first state budget speech, that love wind sign that I carried around the Capitol in, as Scott Walker and this legislature attacked public education and my neighbors in labor. For over a decade now, the way this state spends money has tilted away from what is good and true and right, and that bend isn't getting better. With this budget, it's worse. On public education, every Wisconsin child has a constitutional right to a well-funded and world-class public education. This right has been hacked away at over and over and over again since 2011. And when we evaluate where we have come as a state over these last 12 years, my evaluation is grim. History will not look kindly on how Republicans in Wisconsin have attacked public education. It's been bad for a decade, and this budget is no exception. Defunding public schools and shifting state funding, funding to unaccountable voucher schools that operate without transparency and accountability and are able to discriminate against Wisconsin families is no way to spend the people's money. Further, there is a moral imperative to serve children with special needs, to provide services they need, and to fund those services adequately. The Republicans in this legislature have spent over a decade defunding schools, failing to fund special education, and putting schools in positions to move money around to uphold their commitment to serving children with special needs while making choices to cut other critical and meaningful services and offerings in their districts. And I believe that there is dishonesty in how public education funding is being presented. You're claiming historic investments while not keeping up with inflation. If you do not keep up with inflation, that's a cut. And maybe worst of all, the people of Wisconsin have been told for a decade that the reason the schools can't be funded is because there isn't enough money. It's clear now that wasn't true. With a $7 billion surplus from my vantage point, it looks like you weren't truthful about why you were defunding the schools and instead gathered up that money and handed it out in a tax plan that disproportionately affects the wealthiest Wisconsinites. I'm particularly concerned that your new wealthy Wisconsin tax plan blows a $1 billion a year hole in the state budget, and this will be the next excuse for future cuts. There is also a moral mandate that children deserve to eat. No child in the wealthiest, most powerful country in the world should be hungry because their family cannot afford to eat. But here we are, and we have children in Wisconsin who are going hungry. When you cannot eat, you cannot learn. And this legislature is staring at a $7 billion surplus in the face and choosing to not feed children. Even knowing their test scores and their learning gaps will be affected by that choice. And instead, we're going to hand $20 million to the wealthiest 11 Wisconsinites. 
I don't know who the 11 wealthiest Wisconsinites are, but I know who those hungry children are. They live in my district, and I think this choice in this legislature to fund the rich instead of feeding kids is wrong. The UW system. The Wisconsin idea is a good idea. It's a great idea. It's one of the nation's best ideas. Education is a common good. It benefits people, and it benefits society. And it is a massive economic engine. Investing in the UW system has a 26 to 1 ROI, the best ROI in the budget. Want economic impact? Fund the UW system. Want to create jobs? Fund the UW system. Want to expand the workforce? Fund the UW system. Want to keep people in Wisconsin? Fund the UW system. Want to see our brilliant model of self-sustaining communities across Wisconsin thrive? Fund the UW system. Want to fulfill your promise over the years that families across Wisconsin should have the UW system once their kids got old enough? Fund the UW system. But you didn't fund the UW system. You defunded it. And every person in this state should remember that when the economy and the workforce and the population drains. Republicans failed to fund the strongest ROI in the budget. Republicans failed to invest in one of our strongest economic engines in the state. Republicans failed to invest in a Wisconsin treasure, a Wisconsin jewel, that this and this decision, this budget cycle, will echo for generations. On mental health, well, there's a very important and positive inclusion in the budget, and it is the $30 million investment in mental health funding for our schools. Governor Evers declared 2023 the year of mental health and negotiated this as part of the shared revenue deal. I commend Governor Evers for this funding and what it will mean for so many of Wisconsin's students. Thank you, Governor Evers. On mass transit, I want to cite my concern for what this budget does to mass transit funding and what it means that you have moved it to GPR. We know that with this change, cuts are much easier in future budgets, and mass transit will be pitted against other items competing for general purpose revenue. My concern is that rather than protecting the vulnerable, you're making the vulnerable more vulnerable to future cuts. You're restructuring the system so that in the next budget cycle, you can cut mass transit even more. We see what you're doing. We see how vulnerable this makes the already vulnerable Wisconsinites, and I object. I'm very concerned about what this means for mass transit funding in the future. On maternal health, I, I, I do not understand how or why a body with the votes to pass Medicaid expansion for postpartum health care will not pass this bill, and knowing that the budget was our only shot to get this passed due to the Speaker's refusal to pass a standalone bill, rejected that shot on the floor here today. I am honestly at a deep and total loss at how this body can watch Wisconsin women lose the constitutional right to the full spectrum of health care, watch an archaic 1849 law go back into effect a law that endangers the health of pregnant people across the state, force women into pregnancy no matter how traumatizing or dangerous or unaffordable it is for them and their families, and then leave them without the health care to recover from childbirth. I am honestly, truly at a loss. We know that mental health care is health care. We know that there is a spike in postpartum depression. We know that there is a significant uptick in maternal deaths, especially related to acute mental health crisis. We know this is happening disproportionately in the three to 12 months after a baby is born. We know that the racial disparities in maternal health care are the most extreme in Wisconsin. We know these things. And yet we aren't ensuring that Wisconsin's postpartum parents have access to health care. I'm so sad and I'm so angry because I believe that Wisconsin women and families deserve better. 
This budget should have expanded postpartum Medicaid expansion through the first year. 60 days is not enough, it isn't enough, and Wisconsin women deserve better. On childcare, we are staring down a childcare cliff. We are looking at estimates of 25% of childcare centers closing and rates going up at an average of $50 per child per week. And looking at history, we know that losing access to childcare disproportionately affects women. Wisconsin women deserve better. I have heard from constituents across my district deep concern as they stare down that childcare cliff. The warnings are that there is no coming back. Childcare counts funding is important because once we're off the cliff, it's going to be very hard, maybe impossible to rebuild childcare infrastructure. We know that childcare centers rely on this funding to pay their employees a livable wage, to staff the second shift, to staff Saturdays, all these things making childcare possible for a diverse workforce of people who work at various times of day on various days of the week. If they have to make cuts, as I've heard from my district, they're concerned they're gonna have to cut Saturdays and second shift. I've heard, not only from the child care centers, I've heard from the parents, and here are some of their voices. This isn't a liberal versus conservative issue. It affects everyone. A constituent from West Dallas said yesterday when I called her after I re received her letter, an increase from $600 to $700 a week for two children, that's an increase from $2,400 to $2,800 a month. That's huge for West Dallas and Wauwatosa families. And when I look at your top earner's tax plan, I see you giving millions to millionaires, meanwhile other families are working hard and struggling to pay for childcare. And here's the thing. With, Gov with, excuse me, with Governor Evers' proposed budget, families like this would have had a 10% tax credit and zero increase to the $5,000, and no $5,000 increase to their childcare bill but not in your budget. You gave millions to millionaires and left working families to face increased costs. More voices. Childcare funding affects everyone. Why not invest in something that touches so many facets of life? Childcare counts is important because it provides mothers the opportunity to go to work. It also provides toddlers the necessary learning techniques and tools to be successful in elementary school. The high cost of childcare has forced so many mothers out of the workforce. One of the child care centers serving people in my district said their families are mostly low income and can't afford the likely $50 a week increase per child. And while I'm very supportive of making sure people who make less money are included in tax cuts, I am unclear on how your new $30 a year tax cut helps a low income family with a child care bill suddenly $2,500 more a year or the inability to work because they can't afford to, or the childcare center closes and they can't find another spot for their kid which can knock them out of the workforce. Instead of giving millionaire, millions to millionaires, you could be funding childcare accounts and ensuring, ensuring Wisconsinites the ability to work. Another mom on the $50 increase, I would have to pick between childcare and food or decrease my hours at work. Another person said if costs go up $50 a week, they'd have to choose between quality childcare and groceries. Is this how kids end up hungry? Legislatures see an incoming problem and instead of avoiding it or solving it, they offer a tax cut for the wealthiest and leave other families choosing between affording two critical needs. To not fund child care counts sounds like it's going to mean putting families out of work, into hunger, or both. We live in a time watching you make choices to not fund something that our constituents are telling us could cause hunger and job loss. A $20 million tax giveaway to 11 people, but you can't keep people with childcare at work and eating? I am truly so disappointed 
in this budget. When I drop the plumb line and I look at the budget, I'm left with this. My heart breaks for the families on the child care cliff and will likely have to leave the workforce and lose their salary and take on a new set of financial stress. My heart breaks for the mental health of those families in the meantime. My heart breaks for every child that was promised in our state constitution a right to a well-funded public education. My heart breaks for the hungry kids. My heart breaks for the UW system of schools, the Wisconsin treasure, as it's likely to see significant damage from this budget, jobs lost, campuses very possibly closed. My heart breaks for the most vulnerable, who are made more vulnerable by this budget. My heart breaks for the loss of diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives because we are a stronger, better people when we value each other and our differences. My heart breaks for women who need maternal health care and won't have it when they need it most. My heart breaks for their children. My heart breaks for the kids in our schools who have needs that won't be met because we funneled money elsewhere instead. My heart breaks for the families hurt by gun violence, for the families of the child after child after child after child who were shot this week in Milwaukee, and we show up here and once again do nothing to save lives from gun violence. When people vote for us, there's an element of trust that they invest in us, trust that we will make the best possible decisions on their behalf. I, I, I'm heartbroken. I really am. We, we have so many people counting on us. We have had so much opportunity with this budget. We had so many options. We had so much money. And I don't think we did what's best for Wisconsin. The best way I can explain how I feel right now is deeply grieved. We have not built with this budget the foundation Wisconsin needs for a bright and sustainable future. And so, Mr. Speaker, from my vantage point, this budget is not good and fair and just and right. It is a cart of grain crushed by its own weight. For the love of Wisconsin, the vote is no.